Hello again, cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve, examination, clinical examination. So without further ado, decontaminate your hands as ever and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Zahir Abbas and I'm your osteopath for the day. Can I confirm your full name and date of birth, please? Charlie Smith, 1st of the 1st, 2001. Charlie, how old are you now, please? 19. Lovely. Charlie, I'm going to do a cranial nerve examination for one particular nerve. This is called the facial nerve. Is that okay with you? It's fine. What this means is I'm going to be assessing how the, the functions of your face, so the muscles of your face, uh, and I'm going to ask you to do a few expressions, uh, as well as ask you a few questions about that. Is that okay? It's fine. Lovely. Are you in any pain or discomfort? No. Are you comfortable as you are? Yes. If you want me to stop any time, don't hesitate to say, and oh, we can do that. Is that okay? It's fine. Lovely. Thank you, Charlie. So, Initial observations, always have an initial observation from the patient to see if there are any signs that you might have picked up uh, with regards to facial nerve. Uh, so is there any uh, tosis of the upper eyelid uh, when the patient was talking? Is there any slurring of the speech to some degree? Uh, and is there any asymmetry in the face? So here we can also uh, see for those kind of things. Um, Charlie, I'm now going to ask you uh, a couple of questions very quickly. Have you uh, heard any sounds being louder than they should? Okay, wonderful. So everything that you hear is, is as normal, it's not louder in one ear than the other. No. So this is uh, in relation to the stapedius muscle, and that is the, the, the function of which is to dampen the stapedius, the stapedius bone. And if you get a loss of function of the stapedius muscle, that will lead to hyperacusis. Now what you've got to be mindful here is that we may well need to actually do an examination of cranial number 8, so the Rini's and the Weber's test, uh, to differentiate whether this is a sensory neural loss or a conductive hearing loss. Um, second question, uh, Charlie, have you had any taste in uh, any change in the taste of your food at all? Not recently, no. Lovely. So just to recap here again, the anterior two thirds of the tongue is innervated by the uh, facial nerve. So this is the sensory aspect of the facial nerve done. Then you've got the motor aspect, which we're about to move on to. Uh, again, point of clarity. Remember, a change in flavour is not the same as a change in taste. If you review uh, the olfactory nerve examination, you'll see that the difference between flavour is more so to do with olfactory dysfunction, whereas flavour is more so to do with this or the glossopharyngeal, and that's the posterior one third of the tongue, but more so the anterior two thirds, and therefore facial nerve. Charlie, what I'm now going to ask you to do is do a few expressions with your face. Is that okay? That's fine. Lovely. So to begin with, can I just ask you to fra uh, raise your eyebrows for me, please? And I'm going to try and resist and push them down. And I'm going to just resist me from doing so. Lovely. Thank you. And close your eyes nice and tight, really tight shut. I'm going to try and open them. Permit me from opening them. Wonderful. Thank you. And now give me a big smile, please, if you will. Lovely. And I'll just pout your lips at me, please. And I'll give me a big frown, if you will, please. Lovely. Finally, if I can ask you just to blow your cheeks for me, please, and keep it there, I'm going to try and push, just resist. Wonderful, is that? Thank you very much, Charlie. So that was the muscular aspect of all of that. Then, this is uh, the, the the raising of the eyebrows is key to determine and differentiate between an upper motor neural lesion and a lower motor neural lesion. In the upper motor neural lesion, the the, the forehead is spared. In the lower motor neural lesion, it is not, thus you will get paralysis. So a full paralysis, including the forehead, unilateral, is implicit of a lower motor neural lesion, the likes of Bell's palsy. And if, however, you have sparing of the upper motor neural lesion and from the eyes below, unilateral facial loss, that would be implicit of a motor, upper motor neural lesion, the likes of a stroke. Uh, finally, I want to just examine the area at the back, just to recap the um, cranial nerve 7 facial nerve exits at the style of the mastoid foramen and it is a site where you can often uh, have viral infections so we're going to be looking for any blisters, any rash uh, and, and any, uh, any dermatomal pattern of this sort. So your Ramsey Hunt syndrome for example could also manifest there, shingles could manifest there. So um, Charlie just look over this shoulder for me please, lovely, and if I can also look over that shoulder for me please. Charlie, that marks the end of the examination. Do you have any questions at all for me? I'm okay. okay. Again, decontaminate the hands, thank the patient, and the findings here. So this was an unremarkable uh, cranial nerve number seven examination. Muscle power testing uh, here is essentially scored five out of five, although you might not necessarily comment it that way, but there was no dysfunction, there was no muscle, uh, there was no weakness in the muscles 
all the tone and uh, the sensory testing was also negative. Thank you.